get ready to crack the startup code. We are unveiling the early stage startup investor red flags that could save you from a financial roller coaster. It is time to navigate the startup terrain with savvy insights and a dash of caution. So, welcome to the world of making money online. Are you ready to learn how to earn cash from your cozy home? We will check out simple methods, find your chances, and spill the beans in making money online. Don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, and ring that bell so you don't miss anything. Stay in the loop to be the first to know when we drop a new video. Get set to make your dreams happen. Let's dive in. In this episode, we delve into the challenges one might wish to have known years ago. From missteps to invaluable lessons, we navigate the crucial factors that shape the investment journey. Alright, let's dig into the first red flag. Think of it as our opening act. Picture an investor going all in on the idea, spotlight shining bright. But wait, where's the team? If the focus is all on the idea, waving a red flag, my friend, it is like setting sail without a reliable crew, a shiny ship but a rocky journey, without a team to tackle storms and pivot when needed. Here's a takeaway. We need a balanced show. It is not just about the dazzling idea. It's having a team that can dance through market twists. Success in this investment adventure isn't solo. It is a team effort that demands agility, resilience, and a bit of magic touch. Let's dive into the second warning sign here. Picture founders scratching their heads, trying to explain the very problem their startup wants to solve. It is like navigating a maze blindfolded. This stumble is not just a hiccup. It's a neon sign saying, hey, there's a deeper issue. It is like setting sail without a compass taking a gamble on where you will end up. This red flag is a hint that founders might need a reset in understanding the market and what customers really need. Because you know, startup success is not just about solving a problem. It is about smoothly steering through market twists and turns. Let's dive into the third red flag, the foggy zone. If straightforward questions lead to tangled and clear responses, it is shaky ground. Picture asking for directions and getting a convoluted map. This neon sign hints at deeper issues, raising concerns about preparation and communication. In startups, clear communication is a GPS through business twists and turns. Without it, you risk getting lost in uncertainty, not the adventure investors sign up for. Let's zoom in on the fourth aspect, building rapport. Think of it like a social dance. Entrepreneurs stumbling in this department might hit roadblocks in fundraising and team building. It is like being at a party where small talk falls flat, creating an awkward vibe. Why does it matter? In startups, relationships are not just coffee chats. They are the glue holding fundraising pitches and team collaborations. If an entrepreneur can't strike that chord, it is like building a sandcastle without the right mix. Things might crumble. Fundraising is not just numbers, it is convincing people to believe in your vision. Team building, it is a symphony that requires everyone in tune. If an entrepreneur can't orchestrate the connection, the startup journey might feel out of tune. So in this business ballroom, building rapport is not just a nice day. It is a necessity for a startup to hit the right notes and dance its way to success. Now let's turn our attention to the fifth red flag, the reliance on presentation decks. When a founder leans too much on slides instead of diving into a straightforward conversation, it is like relying on a script instead of engaging with the audience. This is not just a nod to a preference for visuals. It is waving a flag that says, watch out for potential communication and sales hiccups. Think of it like this, a founder armed with a dashing deck but hesitating in a casual conversation. It is akin to having a well-decorated cake, but stumbling when someone asks about the flavor. The deck might be a visual feast, but if the founder can't hold their own in a chat, it hints at challenges beyond aesthetics. Why does it matter? Because in the business arena, not every interaction happens in a boardroom with a projector. There are elevator pitches, networking events, and casual encounters where founder needs to shine without the safety net of slides. If they're too deck-dependent, 
It raises questions about their ability to navigate the diverse landscapes of communication and sales, where not everything can be neatly packaged on a PowerPoint slide. Now, let's delve into the sixth red flag, the potential blind spot when it comes to unit economics. If founders find themselves stumbling over the basic unit economics driving their business, it is like trying to build a house without a solid foundation. This is not just about a preference for numbers. It signals a potential lack of understanding when it comes to the fundamental metrics. Picture this, a founder in a sea of financial terms, but when asked about the basic unit economics, it is like hitting a foggy patch. It is akin to being asked about the ingredients of a recipe and drawing a blank. The business might seem like a well-designed ship, but without a grasp of how each part contributes to the whole, it is sailing in risky waters. So, why is this a red flag? Because unit economics is not just finance jargon. It is a backbone of a sustainable business. If founders can break down the basics, it raises questions about their ability to navigate the financial terrain and steer the ship toward profitability. In this business journey, understanding unit economics is not an option. It is a compass guiding the way. Now let's explore the seventh red flag, the dilution dance. When founders hyper-focus on shielding their ownership, it is like playing chess but babying just one piece. Picture this, guarding your percentage but forgetting the grand chess moves. It is like staring at a tree, missing the whole forest. Dilution is legit, but fixating on it might stifle crucial partnerships and growth. Getting partners is not just about keeping your slides. It is whipping up a bigger pie together. Let's shine a light on the eighth red flag, expectations and market capture. When founders aim for a colossal market without a clear strategy, it is like reaching for the stars without a rocket. It is not just about dreaming big. It hints at a lack of grounded projections. Picture this, founders envisioning a hefty market share but stumbling on the roadmap. It is like aiming for a mountain without sturdy boots. Ambitious goals are great, but without a practical strategy, they risk becoming lofty dreams. Why the red flag? In business, ambitious goals need a solid plan. If founders focus on a massive market share without practical steps, it raises questions about feasibility and business strategy. Dreaming big is cool, but in startups, combining ambition with a realistic roadmap propels you forward. Now let's explore the ninth red flag. Entrepreneurs planning the exit before laying the foundation. It is like picking dessert before the main course, skipping the crucial steps. If exit plans overshadow building a solid foundation, it might signal a lack of commitment to long-term success. It is like skipping chapters in a book, missing the compelling twists. Before we keep going, I want you to know I'm always making new content. So be sure to give my video a thumbs up and subscribe so you won't miss anything. Now, let's navigate our way to the 10th red flag, when companies get all mysterious. It is like planning a surprise party with no guests. Imagine asking about a company's achievements, and it's like peeling an onion with no solid core. A bit empty. Trust in business comes from being open and achieving stuff. If a company insists on secrecy without real accomplishments, it is like having a puzzle with missing pieces. Something doesn't quite add up. In conclusion, these red flags collectively weave a narrative of caution, urging stakeholders to tread carefully in the intricate terrain of entrepreneurship, where success hinges not just on ambitious goals, but on the practical steps, transparent communication, and a solid foundation for sustained growth. And there you have it, we have wrapped up our video on ways to make money online. Thanks for joining in on this learning journey about earning money on the internet. If you're eager for more tips and tricks, make sure to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and ring that bell to stay in the loop. Your support keeps us going. Until next time, happy earning.